Well, thank you for staying with us on the AM show. From COVID-19, we get into politics. We can't do without it, can we? Uh, like we've been told by the Greek philosophers, we are political animals. Well, this morning we're hosting a man who has been there, done that, and he is uh, seeking to become the next general secretary of the NPP. And of course, unseat a certain John Buedu, who is also a stalwart in that position. Musa uh, Superior is our guest. A very good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How do you it's do? a pleasure having you. Yes, good to see you. Uh, and uh, in response to that, one of the uh, craziest things you can find in language, how do you do? How do you do? How do you so do? How do you do? <laughs> right yeah. back at The you. response has always been <laughs> terrible. You know, people find it very difficult to get that. Yeah, yeah. I have a friend who intentionally yes. responds, I do fine. <laughs> okay. Just do. Not, not that she doesn't know it, but just do. But yeah. it's, it's a pleasure having you. And um, hopefully we can have a very fluid conversation on the MPP and uh, other matters arising within your party. But as to start it all off, um, you have been CEO of Tamale, yep. yes. the metropolis. Uh, you are now Deputy Chief Executive Officer at the Forestry Commission, and you're gunning for the General Secretaryship position. I'm looking at the trajectory. What, what, what made you want to you know, get into this? I'll, I'll look at you know, other things surrounding the MPP before I, I get into that, but I don't want to forget. What made you even want to take this up? Service to the party. Service you to know, the party. Every, every, every MPP person should be looking forward to, uh, looking for an opportunity to serve our party. It's a great party, founded by very great people with certain specific values. Today we are where we, we are today because of the party, and um, the growth of the party has been quite progressive. Mm. And if you think you have the capability and the capacity to help their party grow and to help their party to become purposeful and meaningful, I think that you should make yourself available to save their party. So that's the reason why I want to take a party job and I'm looking forward to um, working with their party closely and other officers of their party so that we can get our party back to order. For, for, back for, to order. Yes, back to order for the crucial battle ahead of us in 2024. I mean, we, well, can't, we cannot go into this election with, with, with this current state of our party. No, we need to get the party well. And that is why I am not very excited about this mantra. Uh, we're breaking the eight. I think that mm -hmm. we're jumping the gun. We've got to get ourselves properly organized, do a lot of talking, have a proper conversation so that, um, 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 you know, we can now talk about 2024. All right. So like I intimated earlier, I just wanted to clear that out of the way because I really wanted to start with you about the overarching issue of the MPP and where you are currently. So we've moved from uh, the, the polling station elections to the constituency elections, regional elections, which had its own problems like we saw in the central region. And now we're gearing up next June July. for July, July. Yes, yes. for the big one which is where uh, we would have the party bigwigs and uh, later on also the presidential uh, aspirants uh, getting their groove on. But when you look at the MPP currently, what do you see? Oh, the, I mean, the MPP has always been a, a greatest political party in the history of Ghana. In fact, our tradition... In the history of Ghana? In the history of Ghana. Compared, our compared to what? Uh, our tradition has been the greatest. In fact, the tradition founded Ghana. The leadership of the Buzia Dankotra Dumbo tradition founded Ghana. They did? Yes, we did. I mean, of course it was. What, what happened to the CPP? The Is the CPP the that won our the independence? C the CPP came, was born out of the Buzia Dankwa tradition. Mm. And remember, it was led by J.B. Dankwa. And, went, and we are very, very inclusive. We have our personality, our persona, no, I'm, I'm the way talking, we think. I'm not talking about the UGCC. I get, I get the point no, you're making so, about the CPP being so, birthed so, from, so, but, but there is a group that led you know, the fight to our independence. It wasn't we the recruited, uh, the leadership of the UGCC recruited the personality who led the independence struggle. Mm. And this is the, the, the narration I'm trying to uh, uh, communicate. Right. So the tradition itself is Ghana. Mm. We founded Ghana. We, 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 we got other Ghanaians abroad who had skills and who could support the struggle for, 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 for emancipation. We brought them. And it told you how selfless the tradition has been because uh, Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was abroad and he was, we thought that he was a very talented person, very skillful and strategic. So we brought him on board. 
But, you know, the, 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 whatever happened, now it's history. Now we away. all know, mm. I mean, it is on record that the struggle for Ghana's independence and for Ghana's emancipation started with a group called UGCC, and it was led by J.B. Dankwa. Mm. Uh, so you say uh, the, the MPP is the party with the best tradition, uh, so to speak, Absolutely. the greatest tradition. I mean, quite democratic, mm. open, with certain clear values, liberty, mm. democracy, transparency, The Nkrumah's tradition still lives. It's just that they've not lived oh, up to course. expectations. Of course. I mean, we yeah, encourage the PNC, competitive... The CPP, the yes, PPP, our party yeah. encourages competitive democracy. Right. The only way we can strive and deliver as a country is to be able to agree, uh, uh, disagree to agree. Mm. And in disagreeing to agree, um, of course, you, need, you want all other political parties to thrive mm. and do well. So um, um, we are very, very happy that there, there is competition going on. Because mm. if there is no competition, the democracy is zero. <laughs> That's dictatorship. Yeah, but talking about the, um, the state of the MPP, just a few months ago, about five months ago, you, you said out of your own mouth that the, the MPP is very sick. I think that the caption, the headline was misleading. I right. said the MPP is unhealthy. I didn't right. say the MPP was sick. Uh, uh, unhealthy, sick. <laughs> you know, but the value I mean, is the same. This is it? physiological analysis. I right. mean, it is your, I said, if I said unhealthy, it means that the structures of the party were weak. Mm -hmm. and we didn't have leadership. There was no direction. And that's exactly what I said. And it's still the same story. Mm -hmm. And if we want to deliver this mantra, breaking the eight in 2024, I think that we should do a lot of soul searching and revert back and do a lot of work so that we can get our party administratively correct and politically huge so that we can mobilize and re-energize the base of their party for the onslaught. It's, it's not going to be an easy thing and, mm. and, I, and I will disappoint you. Foresee, my, you foresee it's going, going to be to pretty tough in 2024. It's going to be, in fact, it will be the toughest election in my judgment, in the history of Ghana, you saw that, you saw what wow, happened. in the history of Ghana, yes. not the history of the fourth No, Republic. in the history of Ghana. I mean, there's not going to be any election that is going to, of course, that's my judgment. People can debate that. But you saw what happened in 1992. In 1992, the MPP was very young. You remember we, we, we were founded on the 28th of July, 1992, and by mm. uh, December, we were called into an election. And in that election, we won it and it was stolen. That's how we, we, we publish a document, the stolen verdict. Look at the kind of mobilization. You, you, you concur with that, you know, that analogy or that, of course, that we, we, we line of thought it, that it was uh, stolen? Uh, Jerry Rawlings, may he so rest in peace, was a very brutal dictator. Everybody was afraid of him. He came he strongly was a Democrat at that and point. snatched and, and he beat you, you know, again the, in 1996. The, the, we saw the acts of dictatorship. He wasn't a Democrat. He was then returning the country into democracy. And mm. he was being forced by the international community to do so. Mm. So he had to announce a plan to introduce our country to democracy. When, when we went for the elections, we won it. And that was the biggest political mobilization led by Professor Dubuahin and Ajenim Watin. And that's the kind of mobilization we need for... 2024. And before Let, we... Let's talk about, so you're talking about the fact that the party is unhealthy. I still feel unhealthy, sick. <laughs> they, are, they are like bedfellows. But some have said that the leadership of your party, from chairman to general secretary, vice chair people, general secretary, going down organizers and all of that, that they have failed and that they should, they should all step aside for fresh blood. I, is, I, that, is that something you I, agree with? I, from I, the chairman all the way to the bottom? I, I agree with them 100%. All of them should go. In fact, this project, the People's Campaign, one of our key objectives is to try and advocate for some brand new type of leadership. Because, I mean, we can see the lack of purpose mm. and the lack of uh, uh, foresight in the current leadership. And that is why today the MPP is struggling. I tell you, if you go around the country in all the 275 constituencies, you will understand that this party needs indefatigable, strong, purposeful leadership mm. so that we can get our people together and then we can redefine the Let narrative. me ask you this pointed question. Do you feel if, because these people, like John Buedu, whom you're contesting for the general secretaryship slot, like um, um, Freddie Blay, Freddie Wasimo Blay, and others, do you feel if, by and large, they are retained, wholesale, let's say all of them are retained, or most of them are retained, do you feel that could bode ill for the MPP in election? They're not going to get retained. No, but if they were? In fact, they're not going to get retained. If they were? I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not prepared to answer this question because it's not going to happen. The way you want it answered, it will not be answered that way. Because it's not going to happen. But, but you the see, people, let, the let, party we can draw certain analogies. Taken, you say the party is unhealthy. Party you people, say these people are, are simply not doing the right thing. Absolutely. So they've, they've left the party in... Uh, you could say the elephant is rather shaky. And it's, that it's is not, why. It's not what... 
an elephant and that is why my good so friend, if they are retained it, it simply it, means in 2024 it is on the basis, breaking the eight will be problematic it is on the basis of this that they will never get retained i'm telling you their party people are very very angry uh, and they are not very happy so they want a fresh kind of leadership that can encourage and re-recruit those who have silently left this party so that we can get our party ready and strong to mobilize the rest of the Ghanaian people for, for, for 2024. And if which, which brings me to my next question, because you see, you seem to be speaking from a certain standpoint. The people will choose, supposedly, those who are right for the position. But we also know about the role of money in your politics and how people supposedly bamboozle their way into office. Now, in case you missed all of it, <laughs> In your regional elections, people giving out a thousand CDs, ten thousand CDs, supposedly vehicles and promises of scholarships and all of that. I mean, uh, all that is there. Are you blind to that? Because that could win the elections for some people, whether or not they are fit to be in those positions. I is that something you admit? I, I haven't seen anybody giving money, but I've heard. You haven't. I haven't. Did seen. you hear uh, Adeneho in the last have, in the I regional have, election I talking have, about the fact that he would give out scholarships? I have to heard, this and that. Did I you have, hear that? I have heard that monies were dished out, but I haven't seen. And because mm. I don't have evidence, I don't want to talk about people have that to I swear. You know, but you take the money, true, you swear. If it is true that these things happen, then they are very ugly and and and, and unhealthy and terrible. Musa, I, see, I, 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 I hold on, the hold on, hold on. Of our let, let, Let's do this. You you can't. I mean. You can't, so to speak, pretend that I'm you've never pretend. heard. The I, EIU, I have, the I said, EIU I have many heard. years ago. Oh, I said I've heard. So, so you I, don't know. But I haven't seen. To be honest with you, I haven't seen anybody giving anybody money. But I have heard. And mm. I've heard significantly this, mm. this, 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 this speculations and rumors going around the country. In fact, some members of their party have spoken directly on national television and on radio mm. to, 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 to regret or to denounce these, these activities that we saw in the, in the last regional elections across the country. But I haven't seen, and therefore I can come on national radio and talk to issues that I, am, I haven't seen, I don't know. But if that is true, if what has been said repeatedly by members of our party is correct, then I condemn it in the strongest term. I think that if people continue to do this, that this party will retrogress. The founders of this party, the likes of B.J. Daroch and Alajite and Co., and even the former, the, the, the president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Dodenko Kufu and Jeko, uh, John Kufu, right. they founded this value on certain key values. And I, I think in the conversation I had told you, mm. liberty, diversity, democracy, elections, and competition. And mm. these values is the value that should be leading everybody. So if you go and you contradict this value, you do things that are not acceptable in, 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 the, in the light of things in the MPP organizational behavior, then of course you are undermining You the seem party. to be an island in, in, in a rather vast territory because it appears all around you, the very things you're saying are not MPP, are an MPP, undemocratic, unparty. Yeah, but when those people, are the very things that when, are when, when people and, and do those that, things, you know why that is interesting for me? Because that, you, you feel you are good for the job, when but people, that can impact you when getting people, that position. When people do that, we need to condemn them. If it is true that such a thing is happening, mm. now, like I said to you, I mean, these are all things that can undermine this party. They are Janine Boatin's party, the party of the large. Mm. And that's why we are encouraging You're our talking party. about the former PPA boss? No, the former general secretary of the party, the one who was oh, general okay. secretary in 1992. I'm right. sure that you have just got right. educated right. about No, no, no. It's because yes, I felt yes, at the point yes, you are referring yes, to. Yeah, uh, Boatin's party. Boatin. I because mean, he was the former, the, the first area. general secretary of the MPP. I mean, mm -hmm. from the Buzia Dankwa to the first MPP. He became general secretary when Professor Dubois was our presidential candidate in 1992. His famous quote of the MPP of the large is what we should look at. So that people should not try and narrow this party. And by, by, by narrowing this party means buying your way in. We, okay. we need uh, to compete uh, with ideas mm. and allow our delegates to choose the most competent, most efficient, and most capable people for the job. But and, if you and, come, and, and I'm speaking directly to the delegates, I'm speaking directly to them. Mm. If you allow yourself to be bought, mm. uh, you will not have any moral right to want to regret over the failure of people who have bought but, you. But, but right now, you see, uh, they, they'll tell you that, like Sir John famously said, fear delegates. No, and and it, it, the, the point is, now, now some of them openly, brazenly tell you, look, the good is once they get there, you will not get anything. 
So we'll get a, a piece of cake. Now, if it's the 10,000 you're giving me or something, they say they'll take that. If you get there and you don't do anything, I don't them, have any evidence yeah, about that, this money thing you are No, I'm just about. saying. I know from, from our party is a competitive party. Mm -hmm. And we have come out strongly after every election, whether it is a polling station election, an electoral era election, right. so, so a parliamentary me... primary or presidential primary. Right. We're going we're gonna to gather in Accra, at the Accra Sports Studium, mm -hmm. in the middle of July. Right. And we are going to undertake this important democratic exercise to choose our leaders. I know, and I've been going around the country and having a conversation with the party people. I've been telling them my 10-point plan and my strategy to reassert our party and make it stronger. So that when we go into the election campaign, we know that we have the right tools to do the campaign and to win the 2024 right. election. So let me just avert to your mind, uh, since we're talking history as well, that uh, J.B. Dankwa was only second vice of the UGCC. So it doesn't necessarily make him the leader of the party. Oh, no, he was party, a de facto but, leader. But, you know, but, he was... Uh, he was well, the, well, we have de jure yeah, and de facto. Yeah, we can talk was, about de facto, but de, facto de jure, that I mean, was his position. I mean, but, but let's move was, the conversation yeah, I mean, I, I'm, happy, the I'm happy you're forward. getting all these facts right. Let's... But nobody can deny the fact that mm. this man is the doyen of Ghanaian politics. Whether, right. whether he was the leader or the vice president. A doyen, of, not the doyen. Yeah, a doyen, doyen, doyen of, of course, of course. They're, I did. They're, they're doyen. I, that is your phrase, and that's not mine. Mine okay. is the doyen of Ghanaian okay. politics. But, but if you let's, want, let's, if, let's are you able to tell me another person who can competitively match with J.B. Dankwa? Then we can have that debate. But even in your tradition, you talk of Dombo. Don't you? But I'm telling you, Dombo came mm. after J.B. Dankwa. That's a fact. Nobody mm. can take it away from him. Mm. Solid brand. Mm. Somebody who has brought proper rendition to Ghanaian politics. Is the MPP living out the tenets of uh, J.B. Dankwa today? Just briefly. I, I'm not too sure about that. And that You're is not too sure I, about that. That is why I want to be General Secretary. All right. Let's talk about the money and politics bit that we've started. So You keep talking um, about um, it. No, no, no. Hold, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> because uh, you, you seem to be oblivious to the fact that it's happening. That's the picture you're painting. But I'm just trying to uh, you know, find out from you. Is that to say that ahead of July, well, what is your campaign strategy? I mean, is it going to involve, you know, because these delegates, there are different things that sometimes must be done here and there. Are you not going to pump any money into no, these ventures? No, the, the, the people's campaign. The has, people's campaign? Yes, which, of, of which I'm the leader. I'm the chief executive of the people's campaign, which right. is supporting the Musa Superior bid for general secretary. Mm. Our job is we go to the people and tell them our, our vision and tell them that in, we need proper offices in our constituencies. We are telling the people that every uh, uh, communications officer should have a computer and an internet so that they can communicate well. You have to do proper research to communicate. Any, <clears throat> any form of communication that is street-like is not going to help the, 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 the party. We also were talking about how we are running the party from bottom to top. And mm. making sure that the presence of national executive officers in the various constituencies in the mandate period is key. I mean, in the last four years, there is no evidence that a national executive officer was delegated to a constituency to undertake a working tour, listening to that phrase, working tour. We're going to change that. We're going to do an activity plan. I'll be announcing a three-monthly activity plan. And the, 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 the decision to do that is to be able to mobilize the needs and the challenges of our party people in the countryside. And that will mean that we will get the needs assessment. And when you get the proper needs assessment, you are able to do, put up a solution plan. And with the solution plan, you are able to cure the problems of the party even before the campaign season. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that a party should be active, should be stronger, should be vociferous in campaign seasons. People are elected for a mandate period. You should, you should do your work before you should, the campaign absolutely. season. Absolutely. That is right. the way you are leadership. So that by the time the campaign season arrives, you are already prepared. Whatever mm. you are going to do in the campaign season is going to be a bonus. You cannot disregard and abandon the party structures, leave them, and then in the campaign season, you're going to... Is that what is happening now? That is absolutely what is happening. The party structures have been totally disregarded. And I've told you, I mean, I have been to 107 constituencies since December 14th. And the stories I hear about this party make me come sometimes cry. How come The stories that, you hear about the MVP? I'm telling you, people are very upset. Why is it that up till now we don't have a welfare plan? People have voluntarily joined their party. They've worked so hard for this party. The party has been in power for the last five years. Yet there's no wealth plan. In fact, there's no token reward. Dan gave us certificates after the 2000 elections. Certificate of honor. 
every polling agent, every constituency officer and key strategic officers of their party in the various constituencies around the country. We're giving certificates. Today I'm always proud walking around the country with a certificate showing to the people what the great Daniel Boche did for us. Even a computer generated letter. And this, this, this current executive couldn't even give the last executive, who are no longer the majority of the last constituency executive, have been sacked. If we are not careful, they're not going to go into the ground. And for me, that is quite shameful. It's not good. Um, I mean, when people work hard for you, you have been here working for multimedia, you're doing everything, you come to work, probably with poor pay. And, and, and when, when you are no longer Actually. there, probably, uh, I said <laughs> probably with poor pay. And when you are no longer here, multimedia should plan for you. I mean, there should be a plan. Yeah. So we should be modernizing the way we run political parties in Ghana right. so that we can reward people. Mm -hmm. You cannot have 4,675 constituency officers who are the anchors of their party in the various constituencies. They do almost 80% of the job. National officers just provide leadership direction and logistics and finance. The regional officers then provide. So, so those are the core. The, the, they are the, the core. They do the, the job. Room they and, do the and job. They are not being they are in, but, For example, I was in, in Kranza South, right. and I was amazed to hear that they have ninety-nine communities, mm. it's one single constituency right. with very, very far reasonable travel distance. Mm. And these constituency officers are going to be working and mobilizing their votes. We win an election, and then there is no plan. My, there is evidence that there haven't been any conversation with. Uh, party officers by this current national executive to empower them. And when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah says, uh, organization decides everything, organization decides everything. Of course, it was relevant those days. It's no longer relevant today. Mm. It is empowerment. You empower the people and then they use the social authority they have to organize. If you have more social authority in your community, you are more likely to recruit non-MPP people in Europe than somebody who doesn't have a, a, a social so, so authority. So point made, and it, it's a crucial point you make, but... On the back of these failures on the part of your party and its leadership currently, if we held elections today, and let's say, because at least the writing on the wall is that as of now, uh, a certain John Dramani Mahama, former president, seems to be in pole position, though we know Kwabna, Dr. Kwabna Dufour is also giving him a stiff challenge. And from your end, we have a likely, I mean, there's a pool of people, but those that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Baumia, Alan Chamating seem to be those two that likely would, would, one of whom would get the slot. I'm just saying. If, if the NDC went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the MPP today, do you feel your party would win? The honest truth is that it would be difficult. You cannot win an election with a weak party. It doesn't matter who you... I've heard one of your executives uh, recently, uh, one of your... A staunch party members. So I'm just trying to recollect his name. He said, he said, honestly, no. No, that is his answer. Your party would my, lose. my answer would be difficult. The reason why it would be difficult is that... Is it even possible? Is it possible? Because we will, we will excite our people. Some of us will come in the front and get the mobilization we had in 19... I told you, the only way we can win is to get the kind of mobilization we did in 1992. Mm. And today, the apathy and the level of... In fact, the overwhelming despondency in their party is making it quite uh, unable, making the party quite unable to be able to get the kind of mobilization we had in 1992. So if we, had, if we were to go to, <laughs> for an election today, it would be really, really, really difficult for, for our party. And that is why this bit is so critical for our party people. That's why they love it. That's why they're giving me support all over the place. And that's why probably I'll win this election by 70%. Probably you win this election by, by 70%. 70%. That's a bit of a, you know, a stretch, isn't it? I mean, uh, the likes of Obri Bwahin, himself a deputy, you know, he was, people felt he would go for it and that he had the best chance of unseating John Wedu. He decided to, you know, say, I'm, not, I'm, I'm no longer going to uh, do this. And he has thrown his weight behind one of the presidential aspirants. Let's stay, save that for later. We'll talk about all of that. But... Uh, there are others who are also, the, the rest of you are seem to be weak, according to articles that I've read, that you are weak. You are just showing face. But in the end, John Wedu is going to win, and he's going to give a thrashing I'm to not, you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm not do, do you have what it takes I'm, I'm, to topple I'm, I'm, John Wedu? I'm, I'm not going to get involved into this limbless propaganda. Mm. The party people will take that decision. Whatever, all these 
uh, things people are talking about. We have seen this open close strategy being pushed out there by uh, certain people to get certain... Who are these people? Oh, of course, the general secretary is one of them. He's going around the country and manipulating our regional chairman. Manipulating your regional chairman? Of course, he is manipulating is our regional chairman. You, 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 to, he ha he, is it because he's close to, to Chairman to, Wood to, to me? To, is it because to, others are... No, uh, because they, mean, have, they have done things they should not do. If which you is are what? a party executive, uh -huh. you, don't, you should always seek the interest and the cohesion of this party. That's why you are being elected by a party executive. But if you, you, if you scratch my back, I scratch yours. No, it, is, it is obvious it, it, it that there was it, some support it, it system, John Wedu for Wundu. So Wundu would also support John Wedu. That is why this party must come. That we have, we must get the regularity of this party back. This, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. It's alien. We run a competitive election. Even if you are supported, the best thing you can do is also to support the person quietly. But if five people are contesting elections and you are a party chairman of a region and you decide to publicly make a statement and support A. You see, what you have done is that you have undermined the unity of the party. If the person you have publicly supported fails, and another person comes, and this person is not a deeply rooted MPP person, he would want to undermine your work because you are answerable to him. He's the mm. chief executive of the party. Mm. You are the regional chairman. And if this person is not a good to go NDC MPP person, he would seek to undermine you, and that would mean that the party will be undermined. And that is why it is very dangerous for senior elected officers. If you are a minister and you are not an elected person and you make a, a public declaration, I don't mind. You get me? If you are a regional minister and then you make, you make a declaration, I don't mind. You are appointed by the government. You are a government official. But if you are an elected officer of the party, you become the property of the party. How then? Uh, let, let me just digress just a little bit yeah, and sure. we'll come back sure, to sure. Your, your contest. Yeah, but sure. how then do you re react to Aubrey Bwahin? He, he's, he's basically thrown his weight behind uh, Dr. Maham, Mahamudu uh, that, Baumia, that, the, that, the, 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 the vice president, that, that, basically that, ahead of uh, the, the, the candidacy or those who are going to contest the slot as flag bearer. He, he, he is an elected representative I have within just, the party system. I have just told you that we have to conduct ourselves well as the party, especially yeah. when you are an officer of the party. I yeah. think that these things are not very good. People should reason. Nobody, you, if you are supporting A or B, you can do that quietly. You can finance the person. You can talk to people. You can uh, put up a strategic plan for the person. You can contribute without this noise. The noise is just, just getting too much. When you are an officer of the party, you should be disciplined. I don't accept and I totally reject any elected officer or appointed officer to work for our party to publicly declare support for anybody, whether the person is contesting for general secretary or is contesting we've, we've for MP. We've heard some ministers you. suggest yes. that, oh, uh, Dr. Maumia is, I mean, looking at what he has done. Of we've had party leadership, of, like I just said. Of course, of course, of course, Dr. Does that mean of course, the center is of, not holding, things of, are falling of, apart? No, of course, Dr. Baumia is a huge person. I mean, anybody who underrates Dr. Baumia in this Ghanaian MPP project, then of course, probably you don't know where you are coming from. But that is not the point. The point is that if you are an elected officer of their party, an appointed officer of their party, I don't think it is right that you make a public statement supporting anybody. Yes, senior members, elders of their party, ministers of state, of course, they are no longer officers of their If you are a former officer of their party, of course, you can, you, you can publicly say who you want, you can publicly work for. But in the interest of their party, and for the cohesion and unity of their party, it is critical that we all restrain ourselves so that we can get the party, the competition fairly. At the end of the day, if Mr. A is choosing the general secretary, Mr. B is choosing the national chairman, etc., etc., then of course we can work together and then do the proper project. This thing we are doing is called intra-party policy to try and make the party healthy and strong and purposeful and winnable. Mm. The proper fight or the proper so So basically, fight. this is the battle. The war is in 2024. The, in fact, I love that. You, you, I mean, you have added some knowledge to me. So that's the battle. Mm. So the war, the, the war is what I am targeting. And that is why I want to come out this contest so that the party will be united. All right. Uh, jo John Buedo is also aspiring to do same. If you followed his recent launch, you know, the campaign and all of that. And again, party bigwigs were there. Wuntumi was there, among a lot of other party bigwigs who seemed to be throwing their support behind him. That leaves you in 
Um, no, the it is, high water. It is, but, it, but, but, but the point is, can I, can he's I, taken some pot shots. Yeah, but before you. that, can I just make a look? Whatever happened in that campaign launch, I don't have a problem with it. But I want to let everybody know that if you are a party bigwig, so for example, Professor Michael Quay, mm. you know, an elder of their party, he's not an officer of their party. He has every right to say, John Boydou is the right person, let's vote for him. But Professor Michael Quay is a single Ghanaian. Right. And you are the MPP delegate, you are mm. a Ghanaian. If he has a vote, probably as a member of the National Council of right. Elders, he has one vote, and you have one vote. As uh, Professor Michael Quay is endorsing him. But it's him. significant it, it if, is, it, if a former Speaker of Parliament no, it is, is, not. is, it, it is, is not. giving credence it, it, to this it, it, it is person. Not. How can it be significant? He has only one vote. You have one vote. But it's what it represents. It's the no, symbolism. We all represent, look, even the polling station officer, for me, they are the, one of the most important category of people in their party. Everybody is somebody in this party. Right. So if okay. you are a senior member of the party and you, you, you endorse a particular candidate, I don't have a problem. The problem I have is when you are an elected officer of the party okay. so that, and you have a mandate between now and the, 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 the next right. four so, years, so that point, you shouldn't that, be, that, you shouldn't that be conducting yourself in that uh, manner. John Wedu has taken pot shots at some of the rest of you, you, you as well. And at some point, you've had reason to respond uh, to him. Quoting you in one of your interactions. In fact, if I were the general secretary of the party, I would resign. It is an indictment. It is a total mess. Can't you see the mess that is happening that the NDC is now happy to bully and intimidate us? We're struggling to pass our economic work program and budget just because we have a hung parliament. And Absolutely. This is a few months ago. When, yes, and, and, you know, and, 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 and that situation still is relevant because you're even saying that Anybody who says that the MPP is a healthy party is lying to himself because a healthy party cannot lose a significant number of seats in Parliament. And, and this is consistent. That has been my rendition. And, and I will continue to make the case. And you saw what happened when we were passing this innovative poly, government policy, uh, E-Levy. Today, what the E-Levy is doing for Madagana, everybody's happy. We are raking in the money and we're going to use the money what, to what, do... What has the E-Levy done so of far? Of course, we are raking we, in the money. We've had people here and asked them questions. Nothing has been... Uh, are, are, are you aware? Are you aware? We are raking right in the money. In April, right before May. And I could, I could just check my phone because I have some of these details. Yes. Do, do you know, I think over 300,000 you know, of these agents' uh, accounts and all of that were lost. We, we've actually bled money since you cannot, You cannot have such a huge policy and think that you should just start it off without a problem. Mm. The National Health... Yeah, but Service. you're talking about... No, I'm, I'm not it disputing is that, the, but you're talking about the fact that we're making so, of course, so much gains and we're even seeing the benefit of it. It is raking in the money, but I'm telling you, so far we've this is a policy such... and it's going to be a progressive policy we are pushing. We just started. Mm. So definitely... All the challenges in the policies, we're going to be working on them. Teething problems. And we are not even going to get everything sorted out. Right. Now, every single day we, will, we work on them. Mm. The National Health Service in Britain is over 70 years old. Mm. It's one of the most efficient health services in the world. But mm. they still have problems. We started the National Health Insurance here. This is a problem. Free education comes. Every huge beneficial policy will have little, little challenges. And it is for the government to work through those challenges and make sure that they've addressed those challenges. But E-Levy is super because you cannot deny the fact that E-Levy is not raking in some money for our country. You cannot deny that because it's been reported. And we the, also the tolls, had the, the leadership. The, the toll booths were raking in money oh, for our that's country. Oh, that's that one. You over 200,000 CDs you, you, a day. We decided to scrap them. I, 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 mean, I, I, so I didn't agree with it. I, you didn't I, agree I, with it. Of course, it. I have spoken publicly about it. It was not a very wise decision. Uh, but I don't know what, what, how this was arrived at. I thought, I thought that we should have left it. But that is not the reason we are here. Let's talk about politics and talk about my being general So, secretary. So, and, and going back to that, you have said that uh, John Widow as chief scribe has lost his relevance. What makes you, in, in, correct me if I'm wrong, in terms of the party structures, you've, you've never uh, been in a leadership, poll leadership position. You've been chief executive of the Tamale Metropolis. Now you're deputy CEO of the Forestry Commission. But in terms of the party proper, You've never really had any pivotal position. Now you're, you're going toe-to-toe to 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 with someone who has been there, done that, led the party to win elections. And you're saying he is not relevant and that you are more relevant? Yeah, he's not. Because if he was... What makes you more relevant? Because I have a plan. And I have communicated the plan to the party people and they have bought into the plan. I have told the party people that the spirit of the party headquarters is gone. We need to bring it back. Without the spirit, we cannot get the vigor. What so we need the to bring the spirit. It's gone because of 
maladministration and uh, structural deficiencies in their party. How do you have a party headquarters and a lot of officials of their party, in fact, many officials of their party, when you go to the party headquarters, you don't see them come to work. And it has to take a senior member of their party, Ajia Fati, to make a public statement and, 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 and got concerned about this activity. Your place of work is the party headquarters. The job of the general secretary is the most senior, most functional job of the party. And therefore, you've got to start your day at the party headquarters and end your day there, provided you are not traveling or you are not in a meeting outside the party headquarters or you are unwell. Mm. Otherwise, you've got to be there. And you, when, you make, when you are there, it means that you make the administration super. And then you, 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 you encourage party people to come around and, 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 and have discussions with you and tell you challenges they have. Political party management is common sense. Competence is key. Capacity is key. But I'm telling you, if, if you use the commonsensical approach, you're going to get things Does done. John Boy do done, not have the done, common done, sense? Done, done, done Does John Boy do not have the common sense to Th that get is this, what you are saying. I don't, I don't no, denigrate. Th that's why, I don't, that's why I'm I don't, using I don't, a negative... I don't, you know, I don't denigrate. Does he not? I know, because he wants no, to take over no, his I am position. I'm telling you that I'm going to use a commonsensical approach. And the approach is that... Which, which if you want to draw lines, means that he is not using a common sense. That is not what approach. I said. Mm. That is not what I said. If I believe he was not, he didn't have common sense, I would have said it. He but has you want some. to unseat the person. You say he is yeah, not relevant. What, that, he's not yeah, doing the work. Of course, I said he's not relevant, and I agree. Because, I mean, if, you, if, if we had this sweet super win in 2016, and to this uh, poor abysmal win, in 2020, it tells you that you will struggle. It tells you that you, will, you are not the right person to lead the onslaught. Like you said, the battle required a new strategy. It requires a new vision. It requires a new idea. It requires new energy. It requires people who can get to their people and re-recruit them and encourage them and reassure them that they will not be left when we win election. And that's the kind of leadership, that's the kind of style I'm going to introduce when I become General Secretary of the MPP. Let me ask you this. So in 2018, poster Ben Efson, and you can hate him or like him, but he gets it right sometimes, he doesn't at other times. He said that anyone hoping to unseat the likes of John Bwedu or Esirun Ketia would have to start really early because, look, it's going to be Herculean. We saw the last time when Koku and Yudohu uh, tried. The bull got bitten by the mosquito. Uh, for you, looking at the, the trend, I mean, when you started and what Ben Efson says, don't you feel you're starting late? I respect him. He's a very, very intelligent man, but I disagree with him. You know, you, you saw how Obama started and you saw what happened in America. Mm. You saw how Kobane Japan started and you saw what happened in 2004. Mm. So it's not like that. It's your strategy and the way you get to the people, how you communicate with them. How you make them believe that what you are bringing on board is what is going to provide a platform for us to leap hugely so that we can get our party together, put the pieces together, fix the challenges so that the electioneering campaign would be done well. That is it. And I started this on the 14th of December. I have traveled to all the constituencies more than any other contender all together in this race. Mm. Whereas people go and to town, particular town centers and invite constituency officers from around to come around. I have been doing constituency to constituency. And I have done 107. In fact, the last constituency I did yesterday was Okaikwe South. Right. That sums up to 107 constituencies. And I tell you that people feel valued. And I've been telling them they should reject this idea of calling them. And if they are listening, I'm repeating it to them. When people want your vote, they shouldn't decide the interview venue. They should come to you. And when they come to you, the moment you set off to go to the constituency, you begin to understand the geopolitics and the okay. geography of the area. Oh. And that is going to actually help you when you become general secretary. Of Tell me, should you get the nod to be general secretary, chief scribe, CEO, if you like, of the MPP? What changes are you going to bring about? Give me three major things that you plan on changing in the MPP. Number one, we've got the first one, which is my priority, is to empower party people. Find a way to empower party people. As general secretary, you remain the chief lobbyist of party officers. You've got to find the opportunities for them. You've got to open up. And one of the ways you can do this well is to try and make sure that there's a very, very solid relationship between the government and the party, mm. especially at the local level. 
MMDCs and constituency execs. So there's an empowerment scheme. And that is why I will be spending a little uh, uh, under 50 million Ghana CDs so that we can then empower people. We're thinking of announcing a 50 million token plan for our constituency officers around the country. And every constituency officer will receive an amount of 10,000 Ghana CDs through a directory that I'll be proposing to the National Com uh, Steering Committee to establish. It's called the Business Development Directory. So that right. the Business Development Directory will get this money. We will uh, give this money to our constituency officers and then they will be coached, supervised and trained how to use their money. If the money is given to you and you use it to buy a good suit mm -hmm. or perfume or giving to your girlfriend, it means that you will have to join, you will have to be last in the queue. You have to rejoin the queue so that we empower them. Right. And this is number one. Number two, we have to have a welfare plan. We don't have one. So when party people are in trouble, there is this informal policy of everybody for himself, God for us all. A, a, a very serious, uh, you know, forward-looking political party should have a plan for it party people so that when somebody has an admission to enter university, the party is available to help. If somebody is sick, we are available to help. Right. If you have a funeral, we have... So, so we are going to, we are right. going to do a, 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 a welfare plan. And finally, I'm, I'm going to introduce the infrastructure and logistics department. So we have to restructure the... The HQ and bring in, how, how can you run a party without a logistics department? Yet when you are running a campaign, you have a logistics department. Mm. So this, all these things are new ideas that we are going to bring on board so that the logistics department will be responsible in making sure that we have logistics in our various places. Then the infrastructure, we don't have offices. Mm. And I want, to, I want to commend a number of MPs who have built fantastic offices for their constituencies in their country. Are you cool? You are great people. And I pray that your colleagues would emulate you. But building a party office is not the job of the MP. Right. It is the job of the party. Look at our so, party So that's something else you're going to do. Absolutely. Look at All our right. party headquarters Where, today. Right. Can I just make this point? Right. If you go to Kokum Limle today and take a picture of that office, and I want you to do that for me, and then you go to Adabraka and take a picture of that office. You're, you're, you're comparing you, the MP to the NDC. You, you will understand who is a serious party. You're comparing the MPP to the NDC. Absolutely. You're saying am, the NDC's office and structures that the are better. The NDC built their office on the watch of mills when they were in government. They didn't build it when they were in opposition. We are in government for five years. I have not had any conversation initiated by the current leadership of their party to build an office. And that office does not represent the MPP. Okay. It thank is you, a thank very, you for very making that poor point. infrastructure. In the, in the next few uh, minutes, let's say we have about some seven minutes, right? Yes. I want us to make the most of the time. Uh, Let's elevate the conversation. So beyond you, the, the, the party officers, the next step is the presidency and who yeah. gets the nod. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, some have you know, spoken for Alan Chabating on the, uh, on the back of things, happenings in the past, promises by the current president, and then his contesting the president at a point and everything fizzled out. And there's also the bit about we need someone of northern extraction. Uh, since Liman, I mean, we've had vice presidents, yes, Ali Umahama, uh, Dr. Baumia himself, but not as president. How do you respond? Do you feel, especially as you are of Northern extraction as well, do you feel that it's high time we gave someone from, of that stock? I'll be delighted if uh, we have an of, of the Dumbo stock, I'll if you like. I'll be delighted and be very proud. And I'll see that there's meaning in the MPP if an opportunity is given to a Northern. But, but we've also had John Mahama. I, 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 we've I, had John Mahama. I, I, think, I think I need to answer this question. It is mm. important. It's a very, very important question. So if an opportunity is given to a Northern in our party, in your party, in our party to become president, I think that it will, it will, it will be fantastic. Mm. But it is the people who take the decision, the delegation, mm. the polling station executives, the over 100,000 people take that decision. And everybody must respect that. So that any decision our people take is what we're going to use. So we're going to rely on them. And if the democratic... Some people have said that your party, yes, you will, you will, so to speak, use. And I'm just referring to what others have said. You would use people of other parts, especially those of Northern Extraction, to get your goals. But to get to, get to that final, get past that final hurdle where they become president... It's false. You would, you would never false. get there. In fact, it is the NDC that says that it's false. Every Remember, I've heard members of your party say No, that. whatever they are saying, they are not truthful to themselves. If you are an ethnic group in their party and you think that you are, being, uh, uh, you are not being given an opportunity to work hard. Today, mm -hmm. I want to be general secretary. Eh? 
and I'm from the northern region. I have been given all the opportunity. I have been listened to by non nordness across the country. And every opportunity is being given to me. In fact, the leadership of my campaign, 90% of them are non nordness So what happens so if, it, if, it, if, if, if this it, time, if this time you, yes. go, you go for those elections and the delegates vote not for That is the wisdom the, of the, the delegates president. and everybody... No, would it be a pointer? Would it be confirming that, that you are... An, a can Ashanti party and no, that, it won't. And it that won't. you will use others it to get to your ends, it won't. but you will never give it them won't. the opportunity. I mean, this thing, this thing, this conversation we are having, I think that you have also been been following bandwagon late, what the NDC are saying. I'm not following any bandwagon. <laughs> I'm following what your own people have said. No, I don't. Who are the people saying in, in that? In private have, and in the open, yeah, so, overtly and covertly. So they are hypocrites and they are cowards. They anybody, are hypocrites and cowards. Absolutely. Anybody who is privately uh, trying to undermine our party, that person is a hypocrite. I am saying is that our party is a national party. Mm. In fact, this party came from the, uh, the Northern region, the Northern People's Party. If you know mm. how the MPP came right. about, you know you are not going to Which, which had to be prescribed like, because we couldn't uh, have parties uh, along of you know, course, ethnic uh, lines. That's right. So it was prescribed and we joined, we came together with the National Liberation Movement. Right. And you have heard of the Unlaw, Unlaw, Unlaw Youth Congress and the Unlaw Youth Organization and things like that. We came together and got the <laughs> MPP. Back to work, and you look at the kind of people who are in the leadership, the Chief Bondo, uh, Abefa Kabo, people like CK Tedem, Alaji Isifu, Maria Masampaga, Alaji COP, Alaji Ali Mahama. These were strong stalwarts. And then Araya Lassan, the first running mate of the MPP, was a, a, a lawyer, Araya Lassan, of blessed memory. And then we had Ali Mahama. Ali Mahama was also run for presidency. All the opportunities were available. But I tell you, the decision of the delegates. It's final. The moment mm. the delegates, the conference, the national conference decides that, you So, you so that, 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 that is clear, but, but objectively, objectively, who would fare better for your party going against, let's say, let's it's, assume... It's, it's not my decision. In fact, I'm not even a delegate yet. Baumia or Alan? It is not my decision. I'm not even a delegate yet. Does now, Alan deserve, after, respect, after the history, does Alan deserve to get the nod? That decision and that conversation will have to be done by the delegates. I'm not one right. yet. I'm seeking let's, to be let's one. Let's wrap the conversation If on, I become on, on one, some, I'm sure that my, my input in the conversation will be meaningful if I Some interesting uh, bits. So I want you to wrap uh, the conversation with these two thoughts. And then at the end, uh, maybe the third thought, I want to find out, this whole name, Superior, um, <laughs> how, how did they, I've always been curious, so today as you're in the hot seat with me, I want to find out. <laughs> wow. Idris Musa, uh, the Superior, uh, what, is it part of your name? Everywhere. Or it's an I alias? Go, everywhere I go, people want to know. But I tell you, let's find time, because it's going to take probably 30 minutes to tell you how I got the name. Really? We find time and have this discussion. All right. So wrap the conversation with me on these very important matters but very quickly one a national cathedral and we're pumping all all this money into it 25 million uh, the other day i was doing a breakdown of what we could have got in terms of paying napco trainees nss personnel now we're talking about 800 cds plus for them but from next year we're talking about nurses retention we've lost 3,000 nurses just in this year we're talking about so many aspects you know of our economic life that we could have bettered hospitals uh, and and so on and we're pumping it into a national cathedral What's your take? We are a country of faith. We are a country of faith, but we are not religious. We are, we are secular. We are a country of faith. Yes, of course. There's a national mosque. And it was actually been who built, spearheaded who built by the government. national mosque. It was spearheaded by government. It, 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 wasn't, it, was it wasn't government that it built it. It was spearheaded by government. It wasn't government that built it. And this one is not mosque. being built by government. Of course, you know that but, it's but, not being built. But there built. is. Hold on, hold on. Such a chunk of hold seed on, money. Hold on. That you, seed money could you, have constructed you know, the entire you mosque. Know, couldn't you it? know. You, do you know the contribution of government to the national mosque? I know the contribution of Turkey. I know the contribution of Yes, but there was a contribution by government, and you will not like to talk about it. But I will talk about it. This cathedral is not being built. By the government of Ghana, it's not being. Built. I never said, suggested that no, it was so, being so, built. So but the point is, so if it is not being built by the if, government if, of Ghana, if you say seed money and all of it, of course, we, of course, we have no idea what the seed money would it be. Is, and it's a very, very important icon mm. for our country. Mm. We are not only going to use it for only Christians. It's going to be used for everybody. Conferences will be held there. Big things. You've gone to the U.S. Mm. and the God, the God. You know, they, 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 they've taken they, God they out of their things. schools. They, 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 things no, have changed. I mean, even and, the dollar. And, and, and the on time the dollar, they, they constructed the dollar, their national have, cathedral, have mind you, yes. they were very well advanced to develop. They, they did not put up a national cathedral when they were struggling to feed their own people, when they were struggling to... Do you know there are children in Maybe this country who don't even know what a computer is like? In the next like. hundred years, we'll do better than them. You don't, you don't, you don't, you, you don't say that you're going to get advanced development before you start key development mm. 
infrastructure. But you do what so, is relevant before you do what is We have done what is luxurious, luxurious if you like. We have produced the three senior high school. We are mm. employing people to work in the nation's builder school. Yeah, you can't we pay. Have, you can't we pay. Have initiated. You're, you're, you're providing 97 pesos to feed students. 25 million could have. Do you know how many I, of those I, I that could I tell you that nobody runs a government without teaching problems. And these mm. are the teaching problems. But in a whole, you and I know Akufuado is delivering and he's done close to 70% of his job as one of the most efficient leaders of our country. Seventy percent, based on what? Uh, based on what I have seen, and you have also seen what. Free, what free SHS has even its, under has its global ailments. pandemic, even right. under a global pandemic, we have driven through, and we have got international recognitions. Mm. We have got key officials of the World Bank and IMF talking positive about our country. We've got other heads of state. I, I don't think we should go there because no, the Bretton Woods no, institutions have also me. lashed you. They that flogged is what you. I'm saying. Of they course, have flayed you. So they have I mean, the At the end of a conversation, maybe I, I, we shouldn't I, I, go there. I don't want you to pick and choose. You need to read the report holistically. And you see that a lot of countries were identified and were told, we are better. Ghana right. is one of the leading countries economically in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. Nobody can challenge that. Mm. The data is there. So Akufuado is delivering and he's going to deliver. Mm. So we should be thankful. Even as the IMF and that, projects that, and that uh, is up why, until about 2025, that is why, our, our debt to GDP that, is going to hover that, around that, 85%. That is, that, that is why this party should work hard and mm. choose me to become general secretary so that we can build a very significant monument for the president. That monument is winning the 2024 elections. Oh, for, uh, thank God for that. I mean, when he said monument for the president, I thought we were going to construct another monument. But it's uh, winning the election. All right, all right. That's, 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 that's a good one. But hey, it's been refreshing, especially for the first time. I, I you. absolutely love your interview skills. I'm delighted you are interviewing me. Keep it up. Mm. Thank you so much. Musa uh, <laughs> Superior, who yes. is going to be General Secretary of the NPP. Uh, Pay no mind to me. This is just how I am. And uh, from here, we wish you the very best. We look yes, forward to yes. more from I, you. I think that from time to time, I'll come around. Mm -hmm. But as I speak today, I'm heading to the office okay. uh, to do my official work. All right. Thank you. All the best, sir. Good to see you. Well, uh, this is uh, where we draw the curtains on uh, this one for now. But there's a lot more coming up. And of course, we'll be interacting with you on the different discussions we've been having. What is your take, Musa Superior, for General Secretary of the NPP? And as well as uh, COVID-19, we've seen that uptick. We had that conversation at the start of the show. More coming up on the AM Show. Do stay.